Welcome to RBC Sunday School Rewind. We are so happy to have you here with us on today. Thank you so much for your support of the Rewind. I thank you for sharing it with your friends and your family and other RBC members. We have truly enjoyed recording these and today we're here with uh -huh. Reverend Shirley Thompson as she's going to share with us today's lesson unbiased actions, laws from a loving God. And we're pretty much coming out of Exodus 23, 1 through 12. Minister Shirley, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Cabrina? Oh my God, I am doing amazing. Oh my God, what a wonderful lesson today. How did you prepare for today's lesson? Well, first of all, I went in prayer. And then I read the scriptures to see where the lesson was coming from. And after I did that, I began to look up those key words to see what the definition of each word was. And then I did a background, uh, you know, to check the background to see uh, about the book of Esther and what the book of Esther was all about. And so I did a background search. Awesome. 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 I mean, it was amazing just going through the, the lesson. So uh, one of the things you talked to us about this morning in our Sunday school, you talked about the biblical context. You actually showed a wonderful video from uh, the Bible study project. And I'm sure we'll be sharing that video inside of our Rehoboth Sunday school group. And so others can have an opportunity to look at it at their leisure. But that was an amazing way of helping us to see the context of the lesson. So what is the rationale? why we provide people with those biblical contexts? It's uh, very important for people to know, first of all, who wrote the book, uh, who is the audience, who, uh, you know, who is being spoken to, and why do we have these scriptures before us? And so uh, if you give a little biblical context of what's going on, that keeps us from taking the scripture out of context, and then we can focus on what the lesson is really talking about That's why it's important to do background and know who the audience is and, and what uh, who is saying what to the audience. Today's lesson, what was the uh, context of today's lesson? <clears throat> uh, the context of today's lesson was that um, Mo, uh, we first talked about uh, Exodus and that Exodus means to leave out uh, to depart, uh, going out, and then we discussed uh, that it was three sessions of Exodus, and the first session of Exodus was about when the Israelites were being mistreated, harsh treatment, and then the second session was is talking about how uh, Moses led the children out of Egypt, and then on this session on today, our third session was talking about uh, the rules that God had given to Moses to give to the people in what they are to do and how they are to live. So in the discussion today, what stood out the most for you? Well, I mean, I mean, all the conversations that was going on and people, you know, sharing thoughts. And I think, oh my God, the ancestors spoke today. Wisdom was in the room. What, I mean, what's those statements that like, whoa, that was so good. I didn't see that coming. Yes. Uh, it was, like you say, a great conversation. And, and the fact that we discussed what unbiased meant, you know, we had to go into that discussion is not being prejudiced, uh, it's not showing favoritism. Uh, when you're unbiased, you're not taking sides and then you're not about slander and, you know, just, you're just doing the right thing, you know, uh, when you're unbiased, you, you think about doing what's right and not showing favoritism to people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had some really good dialogue about the crowd. We had conversations about this whole thing of, of justice and righteousness. And so uh, one of the examples that you gave in today's lesson was how we treat the poor, right? How there's yeah. this almost like a double standard when it comes to talking about uh, those that are among us that have less means than others. And uh, one of the things is you gave an example that was uh, from one of the scriptures that we had read about not to show favoritism toward the poor. And it was had something else in there. But inside of that, uh, you gave this example of stealing and embezzling. Um, yeah. And yeah, stealing and, and embezzling. And it said, 
a poor man steals and a rich man embezzles. And then you ask us all, this led to a huge conversation. Uh, should there be a difference in justice between the poor man and the rich man? You want to talk to us a little bit more about that, that question? How did you come up with that question? And then what were you really looking to get out of that dialogue about that whole difference that we show in justice? Well, the, what really brought me to that question was verse three, when it said, do not show favoritism uh, to a poor person in a lawsuit. And so, uh, and it just, you know, how we always have sympathy for the poor. Uh, and uh, that's why that question came along because, uh, but right here, the scripture is saying, do not show favoritism. So I knew that that would be a question that would call for a lot of discussion because you know uh, when we look at the poor we know that they don't have and uh, a lot of times they may have to do other things to get what they need and uh, and sometimes they're trying to provide for their home and they may not always do what's right to try to get that and so um but I was just going by the scripture way to say, do not show favoritism, but it's based on the merit of what is being done too. That's how you judge it on the merit of the crime that is being done. And so uh, if a person embezzled and somebody just steal a loaf of bread, they will get justice, but the justice might not be the same as for its merit. Uh, thank God for grace and mercy because then when they were under law, you know, you were, you were under law, whatever, you just got what your punishment. But now that we are under grace, uh, it may be a little different in what we receive. Not saying we won't be punished, but grace and mercy may will step in on our behalf. So uh it was a great discussion yeah and, and I, I loved how pastor thickpin uh phrased it in our, our classes that understanding justice is righteousness and his example about the little boy who went in the store and stole a loaf of bread but come to find out his siblings were starving at home and when the when the storekeeper found out that he was stealing bread so he could feed his family he gave him more food to mm -hmm. eat so yeah, it's against the law to steal, but grace abound in that situation where we really saw justice because justice right. is, is that we meet that need, right? So that kid had a need and the store owner, even though stealing was wrong, he executed justice um, by making sure that the kid had what was necessary to feed his family. And so um, seeing justice from the sign of righteousness really helps us to see things clearer. And then I, I think also that whole thing of us not being swayed toward one side or the other, but staying in that mode of justice, what is the righteousness no of our are discussing and so sister partlow brought out the conversation uh in your example you said a poor man steals and a rich man embezzled and she said we were to remove the adjective and we would look at the words a man steals and a man embezzled is there a difference and immediately just the removal of those adjectives said yeah that's the same thing they stole <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> I, I think thinking of justice in that way is really critical uh, I would love for you to share with us about the Sabbath. All right. Uh, as we were discussing the Sabbath, we talked about the Sabbath day and the Sabbath year. And after reading and studying it, I realized that Sabbath is real important because it is a time of restoration. Of, of, you know, when they did the field every six, I mean, every seven years, on the seventh year, the land was to rest. And even though the land was to rest, it still was able to produce uh, uh, products on its own naturally. And so we see right here, God is still able to provide even in that seventh year, but we supposed, they were supposed to rest. They weren't supposed to plow it up. And this also gave the animals a chance to rest. Uh, it gave those who were working the ground to be able to rest. And even with the Sabbath day, uh, it's supposed to be a day of rest, resting from our labor. 
And so uh, I think uh, we have gotten away from that being uh, the Sabbath, uh, being a day of rest, because we find ourselves trying to do more and more on that day instead of taking the time to rest and not realizing that we're not allowing people to be able to rest and restore their bodies for the following six days because when he uh, created the heavens and the earth, uh, he created it in six days and on the seventh day he rested. So we know that rest is important to God and not only is it important for man, but he uh, want us to know that it's important for uh, the workers, it's important for the animals, and even for the the land, the ground, everything needs rest. So it just makes me look at uh, appreciate, have appreciation for restoration, because I, we discussed about we have restoration week, and I thank God for the restoration week, because we do that every three months, but that gives those who are constantly doing things a chance to be able to rest from their labor and to be able to rebuild themselves up and just have time for themselves. Because you know, uh, your body needs rest. And if you're constantly const doing things, uh, then your body is gonna, it's gonna shut down. Uh, it's not gonna have the energy and the strength that it could have if we, uh, at taking time to do the rest that is due to our body. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Reverend Sterling. What a great dialogue for our We Rewind. I mean, uh, our lesson came from Exodus 23, 1 through 12, and we got to dive into this whole thing of, of doing what's right, speaking truth, um, taking care of the poor, knowing the difference between justice and righteousness and seeing that light of that, understanding our own biases and honoring the Sabbath day as well as doing the right thing. And so I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful lesson and a wonderful discussion. Is there anything that I may have missed in our conversation? Um, I want to leave with everybody was, I forgot to mention this in Sunday school, but the question I wanted to ask was, what do these specific laws reveal to us about God's character? Mm -hmm. And to me, you know, that's something I want you to think about. As for me, it shows me that God is concerned about us and that he loves us and he cares for us. And he took the time to give us laws and rules so it can help us uh, be the people that we need to be because he knew we needed guidance. He knew that if we didn't have those laws that we would be uh, a terrible people to even <laughs> uh, have, you know, on this earth. But he had to set forth some rules and laws. And and also I want to uh, say, uh, ask, how can we as believers take action to ensure more equality justice in our legal system? So those are thoughts that we can think about. Those things that we can do to make a difference. Awesome. Thank you so much. Again, thank you for watching The Rewind. We hope you got something out of today's lesson, unbiased action, a loss from a loving God, Exodus 23, 1 through 12. And so we look forward to uh, joining us here again on The Rewind. Thank you, Minister Shirley. Have a great day. Thank you, Cabrina. It was nice talking with you.